wonderful to be here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm the only cardiologist in the room, but that's okay. And my disclaimer is that I don't currently know my blood ketone level, but working on that. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about the ketogenic diet in the management of heart failure. In terms of a very brief outline, I'm going to touch briefly why I'm here, why I've chosen to research this, a little bit about heart failure, um, the current management of heart failure, and then I'll touch on the trial itself. The trial is currently recruiting, so I don't have results for you, but we'll talk about when they'll be anticipated. So I am an interventional cardiologist. That's a picture of me in one of my favorite places, which is the cath lab at um, Westmead Hospital. So as an interventionalist, I treat coronary artery blockages. I treat acute coronary syndromes. I put in stents. And to me, that's the easy part about being a cardiologist. The harder part, I have to say, is sitting in a room with people who often have cardiometabolic syndrome. It's pretty much the majority of my patients with coronary artery disease and talking to them about lifestyle and weight loss and what else they can do apart from the medications to improve their health outcomes. So that's the much harder part as a cardiologist. And we're, we're pretty time poor in that we have to cover a lot in a short time. And a lot of that is often spent on the medical therapies. Um, and so part of my role at Westmead and the University of Sydney is at the Westmead Applied Research Centre. And that's a photo of um, part of our group there. And we're an impact centre of the University of Sydney and we do a lot of clinical trials. So a little bit about heart failure. Heart failure obviously is the inability of the heart to pump out enough blood to meet the body's metabolic demands. And it's usually secondary either to an abnormality in the structure or the function. And we see you know, um, significant changes when people get heart failure. And the burden of heart failure is absolutely massive. We're talking 64 million people globally with heart failure. And even in Australia alone, it accounts for a huge burden on the healthcare system with 179,000 hospitalizations for heart failure every single year in Australia. And for the individual, it's a huge consequence if you're diagnosed with heart failure. It's a 60% reduction in your life expectancy. So clearly, we need to have strategies on top of medications that can improve outcomes for these patients. Now, today I'm going to focus a bit more on what we call HEF-REF, which is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. But there's different types of heart failure, and as cardiologists, we like to classify them according to the ejection fraction, and that's the left ventricular ejection fraction. It's basically the amount of, of blood that your heart pumps out. Now, keeping in mind that our hearts are not 100% efficient, a normal heart pumps out between 55 and 70% of what goes in. And so when we talk about reduced ejection fraction, we're talking about either an ejection fraction that's less than or equal to 40%, which is what we term HEF-REF, uh, versus mid-range, which is 41 to 49%. Or a lot of you might have heard or be treating patients who have HEF-PEF, or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which is a more normal ejection fraction, but they still get heart failure. And part of that is due to diastolic dysfunction, and very common in overweight, obese, and diabetic patients. So current heart failure guidelines and management. Um, obviously, this is bread and butter for cardiologists. We have lots of guidelines internationally and in Australia that tells us how to manage patients with heart failure. And really, this, this is actually from one of my students' reviews. But if you look at the management, it's very much focused on the pharmacological therapies. You can see that on the right of your screen, we have ACE, ARBs, Entresto, we've got beta blockers, we've got obviously MRAs, and nowadays we also have SGLT2 inhibitors. Um, of course, we give diuretics, less prognostic benefit, but for overload. And then the dietary component historically has been very focused on salt restriction. And if you look at what patients get told in hospital or after a heart failure clinic, they pretty much get prescribed their medications, and then they get told to restrict their salt and their water intake. And that's usually the most um, sort of dietary interventions that they get. So I guess for myself as an academic and a researcher, I wanted to explore more the dietary interventions in heart failure. And of course, there is some literature out there. It's pretty scarce. And they've looked at things like the Mediterranean diet and DASH diet, and also the ketogenic diet has now been more emerging. Um, I just wanted to include a slide on why research into diet and health outcomes in my field, obviously cardiovascular outcomes, is so conflicting and so difficult to do. And the problem is, is that nearly all our publications, 
thousands, tens of thousands of publications on diet and health outcomes are observational in nature. And no matter what you do, how many multivariate models you create, you cannot adjust for all the confounders. And so the problem is, is that normally you have a study, you try and address for what you know, but just because you have the fact that the patient's diabetic or they have hypertension, you can't adjust for sometimes socioeconomic factors or other things that might not be listed in a questionnaire like pre-diabetes, insulin resistance, et cetera. And so all these observational studies are really confounded. The other problem is that they often only collect diet at one single time point, as we've illustrated yesterday, usually with a food frequency questionnaire. And then you follow those patients for 15 years and try and correlate outcomes with what they were eating 15 years ago. So it's really very difficult. Um, of course, we talk about dietary patterns. Here we're talking about low carb and ketogenic diet, but it's not a single food that we can test. It's a dietary pattern, and it usually goes along with multiple things that you can study in that research capacity. So, I mean, my passion is doing randomized controlled trials and clinical trials, but they are incredibly hard to perform for dietary interventions, highly expensive. It's limited by participant adherence over the long term. And this is why a lot of them don't get done, but I'm certainly passionate about trying to do more in the dietary space. And just to really illustrate that example of why observational studies can be so fraught, we have you know, salt restriction really um, in guideline recommendations for people with heart failure. And this is based on many, many observational studies and systematic reviews and meta-analyses of those observational studies showing that salt restriction will improve heart failure outcomes. But more recently, they actually finally did a large randomized controlled trial to look at it. And surprise, surprise, no benefit from salt restriction in people with heart failure. So this is the thing that we have to do. We can't rely on observational work for diet. We really need to look at RCTs. So coming to the ketogenic diet in heart failure. So the reason why I was so interested in this is, um, A, as you know, Rod probably knows, I, I started you know, recommending low carb and ketogenic diet for a lot of my patients because I found that after the first few years of practicing as a cardiologist that I was doing the usual recommendations, people didn't seem to lose weight, people didn't get better. And then as I started recommending more low carb or keto, suddenly my diabetic patients were losing weight and keeping it off. And so I started to look at a ketogenic diet in different cardiac um, conditions. And I think it's really exciting in heart failure because we can see in animal studies that the failing heart seems to switch to ketone bodies as a fuel source. And this is in advanced heart failure models. And there's evidence for exogenous keto administration in humans as well with some benefit. Now, there's not much out there yet. There's a very small RCT that looked at a uh, um, low carbohydrate diet in a specific population, so it's obese people with diabetes, and it found um, that it did improve diastolic function, but very, very small numbers. We're only talking six patients in each arm. The other exciting thing is that as a cardiologist, the field has really exploded in terms of the use of SGLT2 inhibitors. And these sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitors actually were originally designed as a diabetic drug, as I'm sure we're most familiar with. And they block the renal reabsorption of glucose, independent of insulin, and they promote ketoacidosis. And the big thing in cardiology, these are all the rage now because there's been some really large randomized controlled trials. These are obviously industry trials that have found that these are now a heart failure drug. So if we give patients SGLT2 inhibitors that do promote ketoacidosis, uh, ketogenesis, um, they've found to improve outcomes and they reduce heart failure hospitalizations in people with HEF-REF. And the, the, the thought here is that there's euglycemic ketoacidosis, but we don't really understand how they're improving those outcomes. So that takes us to the trial that I'm currently doing. So this is a ketogenic, uh, ketogenic diet in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, and it's a pilot randomized controlled trial. And we're aiming to assess the safety and feasibility of a ketogenic diet. Our primary aims are to see if it's feasible and if it's safe. And then we also want to look for signals for clinically meaningful changes in our heart failure outcome measures. And so these are things like left ventricular ejection fraction on the echocardiogram, uh, BMP level, and then symptoms and signs of heart failure. <laughs> 
Uh, this is part of my team. So this is um, uh, led by myself out of the Sydney University and Westmead Hospital. Um, lucky enough to have gotten two grants for this trial. So in initially we got a grant from the Western Sydney Local Health District. And then after that, I applied and received a Heart Foundation Vanguard, gra Vanguard grant. And so the University of Sydney is the sponsor for the trial. We're currently recruiting around the Western Sydney area, Westmead Hospital and Blacktown. That's my trial manager and, and, and my study coordinator there. And we've also partnered in terms of research with the Sydney Low Carb Specialists. Um, and so lucky to have Alex Deeper and um, Kate on board who will deliver the intervention for us. In terms of um, just broad inclusion exclusion criteria, so patients will be aged 18 years and over. They have to have HEF ref, so the ejection fraction needs to be less than or equal to 40%. And then we try and use some risk enhancing factors to try and get a bit more bang for our bucks. We're more likely to see a difference, I believe, if they are more sicker patients with HEF ref. So if they have elevated BMP levels, um, recent hospital admissions, or current cardiac um, heart failure symptoms. So all these things might mean that they will benefit more from a kid diet. Um, we are excluding type 1 diabetics or type 2 diabetics who are requiring insulin just because it might get a little bit trickier to manage. But in general, we are we're still recruiting everyone who will be on all their standard heart failure medications and also people who are on SGLT2 inhibitors. Um, the, we do need to exclude people who have quite low blood pressure, so uh, systolic blood pressure less than 90 or very low BMI. So we're a little concerned that the ketogenic diet might cause a bit of low blood pressure and, and possibly some weight loss. Uh, we randomised, and it's a pilot trial, so we're randomising 30 patients in each arm, total of 60 patients, with the intent, if this is positive, that it will lead to, for funding to a much larger RCT. Uh, we're going to be doing a normal caloric ketogenic diet, so very low carb, high fat, um, and moderate protein. And then all participants will be on guideline directed medical therapy as well. Uh, the primary outcome, like I said, safety, feasibility, and so the safety endpoint is listed there, and then the feasibility will be measured by the compliance. And then secondary outcomes is what we're really excited about, which is basically looking at all these different heart failure outcomes. And if we see a signal, then we can power a much larger trial for one of these outcomes as a primary endpoint. And we're of course looking at patient reported outcomes as well, such as quality of life and heart failure symptoms, which we hope to see improve on a ketogenic diet as well. Uh, this is just an overview of that um, study design and just looking at that inclusion exclusion criteria, the one to one randomization to control, which is just standard care. And then all patients at baseline have all these assessments done echocardiogram, fasting pathology. So we'll me measure other factors like lipids, lipoprotein little a, some other exciting biomarkers, and we'll look at the impact of the ketogenic diet on these other factors after the four months of the intervention. Um, just to add a little uh, patient example, uh, this is a stock standard patient of mine that I treat at Westmead Hospital as an interventional cardiologist. He's one of my patients, 38-year-old male. He had an acute STEMI, so a, a severe form of a heart attack, whereas LAD, I'm not sure if you can see that here, is completely blocked off. So he came to the cath lab, we put in a stent, we opened up his, um, his coronary artery. He already had at the age of 38 high cholesterol, he was smoking, now stopped, and pre-diabetes and obesity. And unfortunately, after his heart attack, he had severely impaired left ventricular ejection fraction that unfortunately did not improve with time despite the use of optimal medical therapy, which is bisoprolol, entresto, empagliflozin, and spironolactone. So this patient still has an ejection fraction of 34%, very young man, working, kids, family, and is still short of breath. So it would be fantastic to have this sort of patient recruited into the trial. And if we find a benefit, a ketogenic diet gives us another therapeutic option to offer patients to try and improve the heart function. So this is our current status. Um, we have been screening a fair number of patients. We've screened um, more than 140 patients, um, and then uh, 25 of those have expressed an interest. Obviously, these are just basically approaching patients who may never have heard about a ketogenic diet. No doctor or, or person has mentioned it to them. And we're trying to convince them to be randomized to a control or to undergo the diet for four months. So from those patients, we had enrolled 12 and consequently had to ex exclude some because our ejection fraction on our baseline assessment showed that it had improved, which is great for the patient. And we've randomized seven. So still ongoing. And I expect by the time we finish recruiting, we'll have results by about 2026.
Um, a few concerns with the ketogenic diet, I guess, that we're trying to look at as well. Um, so the aim of this is to not induce too much weight loss, because the scientific question is, is being in ketosis actually beneficial for the failing heart? Um, so weight loss might occur, but we don't actually want too much. So that might be a struggle for a lot of these patients who might have metabolic syndrome and they go on a ketogenic diet and they actually do lose a, a fair amount of weight. And we're also going to closely monitor hypotension as well as electrolyte imbalances. These patients are on diuretics, SGLT2 inhibitors, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors. So it's going to be a fine balance for these patients. Um, but it's really important that we do this because I can guarantee if there's a safety issue and the patients have their heart failure medication stopped, cardiologists won't implement this diet down the track. So I think this is really important for this trial to address all those concerns. Um, but I'm excited that given the beneficial effects of a ketogenic diet, and we know that it does improve multiple cardiovascular risk factors, um, I think this will be one of the first trials that will show if it can be beneficial in people with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And if it does show a benefit, leads to a larger trial, then it really could be clinically, um, clinical practice changing. And then I guess overall, as an academic and a cardiologist, I really feel like we need to try and help pioneer new ways of doing randomized controlled trials that look at diet specifically. Um, and often it is using that proof of concept trial first or using biomarkers rather than hard outcomes to try and um, recruit less people but should still be able to show an impact. I've also got a bit of an interest in CT coronary artery calcium scoring and CT imaging in general. And you can actually use that to monitor things like coronary plaque burden and plaque progression, so you require less patients in a clinical trial to show an, out, an impact from diet. Um, this is just a, a review if anyone wants to read a little bit more about what the evidence is for heart failure and nutritional um, research. Uh, my PhD students just published this. And then also the email address for our trial, please, if you have patients, ideally around the Western Sydney area, <laughs> um, please feel free to refer to the trial. And just one other aspect I would highlight is that obviously this is a small pilot trial, it's in Western Sydney, but if positive, we will expand. And so I'll be really keen if you are a health practitioner administering a low carb diet and you think you would be wanting to be involved in this sort of trial in the future, please come and have a chat to me. Thank you.